Hey everybody, this is Robert with Mold3D.com. Today we're going to be going over keys. Keys are useful for breaking up characters or other models into multiple pieces before 3D printing so that when you assemble the model back together, all your details align properly. It also makes the gluing process much better because there is no chance for anything to move while drying. On the left, you can see the male connector and the bicep, and on the right is the outline of the female connector that is in the forearm. For this tutorial, we're going to go over how to make a tapered key, which is better than the key that I used for that image. So we're going to go ahead and make a primitive cube in ZBrush. And if we go to the Geometry tab and turn off Smooth and divide once, and then go ahead and turn it back on and divide a few more times, this gives us a nice beveled edge. Now that we have a cube to work with, let's go to the Deformation tab. And we're going to play with the tapered slider. Uh, the best thing to do is turn on X or Z, or actually X and Z and taper the model to be significantly more tapered on one end, pretty much matching what I'm doing here. Um, once we have a taper that we're pretty happy left, let's go ahead and convert it to a poly mesh 3D so that we have real geometry to work with. Now that we have a real polygon, we're going to duplicate this model and make two versions of it. And our goal is to make one version that is slightly smaller than the other one. So it essentially fits inside. So I'm going to use the transpose tool here to align right into the middle of the model um, because we're going to be scaling it in one direction later on. So I'm just setting up the transpose tools right now. So once I get that right about in the middle, and it's not that critical really, um, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the deformation tab once more. And this time we're going to use the size, but we're going to throw on a limiter in direction. We essentially want to decrease the radius of the model, but keeping the, uh, the front and back the same size. So it turned out to be the X and Z again. So what we're doing is scaling this down to, um, to leave a decent sized margin inside of this uh, key. So once we're pretty happy with that, it seems like I'm going to play with this setting a little bit more to make it pretty nice and uniform. We're going to go ahead and switch to the transpose tool and using the translate and the back end on the right is locked. We're going to scale it down to create basically a uniform edge that goes all the way around the model. And uh, the idea is to have one side sort of stay in place and uh, pull the other, the other end of the model inwards. Okay, so now that we have our mesh, this is going to be the basis of all our keys. So this is something that we're going to save out. Um, and the best way to save this out, I found, is just to merge it down into a single subtool. So let's just merge down. And uh, let's also rename this model. This way it makes, uh, makes more sense when we import it in. So this is our tapered key. And I'm going to save this into the directory. And uh, after the end of the tutorial, I'll also provide you guys a download link for this model as well. So tapered key, ZTL, so we'll save that out. And uh, next, let's start off with a, a demo a model to work with. So I'm going to keep this simple and use a pair of cubes here. So um, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. We have the pair of cubes, and uh, we have our imported... Um, tapered key, which is super huge. So we're going to go ahead and scale this down to a really small size. Um, the goal here is to inset the key um, enough to where it clips out the back of it. So once I find a sort of a sizing I'm happy with, uh, and I'm also going to reduce the length of it. Uh, it's not too critical, but it's just a personal preference to keep it mostly a square. So. Um, I'm going to turn this back on and then I'm going to jump back here and make sure that this key is inset properly. And I'm just checking to see how far it's going to stick into our other object. So that looks like a pretty good amount sticking into the object. Uh, the next uh, thing we want to do is split that back out into two separate meshes. So let's go down here to uh, split and split to parts or similar parts, it doesn't matter. Actually, similar parts won't work because they're already similar. So make sure you do the split to parts. So now that we have two meshes that are basically on top of each other, one slightly larger than the other. Um, now we're going to go ahead and start combining these meshes. So first we're going to combine the male connector. 
Um, and a good way to remember is the male connector is going to be this smaller one. Uh, so you don't want to do this inverted. So let's take the uh, male connector and the piece that is going to be attached to that and move them on top of each other. And we're going to go ahead and just merge those down. So it's one single piece. And uh, the next step is to create the female connector. So we're going to almost do the exact same thing, but we're going to zoom in here. And uh, the key is to turn on the little moon and you make it so it's going to clip out. And then once you turn that on and you merge down, uh, we're going to jump over to the Dynamesh tab. And once we Dynamesh, um, turn on groups and set your resolution to your desired resolution to maintain the detail of your model um, and go ahead and run Dynamesh. And that's going to go ahead and clip out the negative shape for us. So we pretty much have a perfect uh, keying set up here. All right, so let's go back up to the subtool and turn them both on so we could see. And uh, I'm just going to zoom in and just show you kind of how they fit together. So this basic process is what I use for creating all my character keys uh, for things that I'm going to be gluing together. And um, this can be best illustrated if I hide each half of the model. You can see that we have almost a perfectly uniform gap between the models uh, inside of the key, but the model itself on the outer edge fits perfectly together. And this will leave us just enough room for any margin of error for the 3D printer and uh, leave room for glue to settle inside of the print. Thank you everybody for joining us on this Mold3D exclusive tutorial. Uh, hopefully it will be helpful for you to start keying your characters to prep them for 3D printing. Definitely follow us on Twitter, uh, like us on Facebook, and definitely join our newsletter so you get our free giveaways and site updates. Um, with more tutorials to come soon, thank you and we'll see you next time.